In this video, I'll show you how to make graphs with numerical data. First, you'll have to start off with data in StatCrunch. I'm going to be working with the temperature data here in the first column. I will click on graph and then I need, then I need to choose what graph to make. I can choose a histogram, stem and leaf plot, a box plot, a dot plot. Those are all variables that would make sense for one quantitative variable. I'm going to choose histogram first. Any variable that's numeric is going to end up in this gray column. If it's not numeric, then it's not going to show up. I'm going to use the temperature variable. So I click on that, it sends it over to the right, and now I can choose some options to make my graph. I am going to adjust the bins. Now let's say that I have data that begins at a decimal number and I'd like to have a nice starting point, I can look at my numbers and decide, hmm, well, let's say that I start the data at 92. I'm going to choose bin widths of one and all this can be edited later too. And I am just going to push compute and see what happens. I can come back and edit all of this later. All right, here we go. Here is my histogram of my data. So you can see the shape, there's the axis on either side. The variable did get labeled at the bottom, as well as frequency up the side. So let's say that I want to edit this. I can click on options, and I want to have my graph start at 93 instead of 92. And then if I want to see the mean and the median on the graph, I can click these boxes. If you think that there is a shape that matches the data, you can choose one of those. Normal might have fit this data. I'm going to click on all of these just to see what happens. And I can also change the color scheme of my graph. I can choose a different x-axis label. Maybe I want to see more description like forehead temperature. And since this is in degrees Fahrenheit, I'll put an F. I can also change the y-axis label. I can give this a title, let's say data collected by students, which is not super descriptive, but it will show you what you can do. And then if you have lots of graphs, you can change how many graphs get onto one page or not, and then go back to compute. So here we go. Here's our histogram again. To get this graph into your document, you can just copy and paste or take a screenshot. You can also do fancier things like um, copy from here or save your graph into StatCrunch itself. I actually don't think the data look very normal based on this normal distribution line, so I'm going to take that off. I didn't have to go through all of that, but there we go. It's gone away now. All right, so suppose that we want to do a different graph. It's already in the histogram option, so we will need to just cancel out of this. To get another graph, we need to start back at the beginning and choose a different graph to begin with. So here's a stem and leaf plot with the temperature data. Outlier trimming, extreme only, leaf unit, I can choose. So I noticed that my data are in the, the 90s, and so I can choose a leaf unit of 1. So when I compute my stem and leaf plot, the tens group is 90, so there's a 9, and then the leaf unit is just a whole unit. So everything landed on one row, which is not terribly descriptive. Let's see what happens if we change our data and choose a different leaf, actually change the graph, change the leaf unit to be 0.1. Let's see what happens. Ah, oh, that's kind of interesting because all of our decimals are 0 0.0. It looks like we have split up the 94s, 95, 96s, and 97s all onto their own leaf units. So now we can see a little bit more pattern to the data. Maybe what I could have done instead is graph a different variable, the one that had the decimal places next to it with a little bit more precision, and then I'd get a different graph. So don't be afraid to play with 
the options and just see what happens and then make some changes. I wonder what happens if the leaf unit is a 10. Oh, that's interesting. So it looks like what has happened here is we rounded. Anything that is 94 and below is considered a zero and anything that was 95 and above is considered a 100. So this first row says a uh, leaf of 10 and the leaf unit is not t tens. Sorry, the, the leaf is a nine and since the leaf unit is a 10, nine times 10 make 90. So we have one number that was rounded down to 90. And these other leaves are zeros so we multiply kind of times 10 and we have a 100 so all of the other numbers 95 96 97 got rounded up to 100 so there's a lot of rounded up to 100 numbers you can count how many there are by looking at the number of leaves and then there was one number that was rounded down to 90. now kind of confusing why would i round this data I probably wouldn't, but I've just shown you what you possibly can do here. All right, let's go to another graph. Box plot. Choose the temperature variable, and I'm not going to choose any of these other options. I do like use fences to identify outliers, and sometimes I like to draw the boxes horizontally, so I'm going to check that box. You could also add in a mean and median if you wanted to, and then x-axis, y-axis, title. Actually, x-axis makes sense and title makes sense. And then we'll go to compute. All right, here is our box plot. Um, I don't have a title. It'd be nice to see one up there. Temperature down below. If you adjust this window, then the box plot gets a little wider. And you'll notice that this box plot, you can't see the median vertical line. So normally, the box plot has a line somewhere in this middle but because there are so many 95s or 96s, your median and your first quartile might be the same, or maybe it's the median and the third quartile is the same. I can't really tell until I look at the statistics. Hovering over this box, it looks like it's giving me a yellow pop-up box. Number of values is 10, and then it tells me the five number summary, which is really useful. And it shows me that the median is 96 and the third quartile is 96, so those two lines are stacked vertically on top of each other. And there doesn't look like there are any outliers. Otherwise, outliers would be marked with a little asterisk or a little star or a dot or something. All right. If we wanted to graph multiple sets of data, if we uh, like wanted to group by thermometer type, we can change the group by to be thermometer and then compute. And now we'll get two box plots. So this is a very funky looking box plot because the data set is so small. Maybe a box plot is not good for a data set that's about five. And here's the other box plot. So you can see the different labels here on the y-axis and the graphs are horizontal, which is kind of nice and pleasant to read because of the left to right um, axis. And so we have two box plots all into one graph, which is really nice for comparison. I mean, aside from the fact that my data set was really small and the box plot looks kind of wonky there. So that part is not recommended. All right, any other graphs that we can make? We could do a dot plot, choose our variable just quickly here. Now we see all the dots. A, a title would be nice, a better, a more descriptive bottom axis would be nice, but you can see all the little dots and the options, the point size is at two. Let's see what happens when we change it to four. Looks like we have bigger dots now, so we can change the readability of the graph. Another thing to change on the box plot, sorry, not the box plot, the dot plot, would be the title and the axis. And we could also group by thermometer type if we wanted to. So we get two box plot or two <laughs> dot plots all in one. You'll notice that there's no other axis up here. It just is floating down below. So you need to read down to the axis to read the dots. 
All right, and so there we go. We have a number of different ways to graph numerical data for one variable.